All right, now we transition to plotting those points for the two arrays onto our uh, sun path chart. Okay, and so here we have our sun path. It's, again, I'm just using it for state college. You could use it for your location, in which case the times at which you're actually going to be shadowing each other are going to be different. So if I go to my table from the textbook and I look at 1A, 2A, 3A, I'm going to do those in blue first. I'm going to get uh, alpha values at first 180 degrees azimuth, and I'm going to go up 41 degrees for 1A. Then I'm going to go to 244 degrees azimuth, or 64 degrees uh, from the convention in the book. 21 degrees. So right, 244 and 21. And I'm going to go down to 256. So 256 is uh, 76 degrees and down to 12. So somewhere right around here. That's where I'm looking at. All right. And I'm going to, that plots the three points for 1A, 2A, and 3a. If I go over to 1b, 2b, and 3b, I'm going to need to go 116 degrees and then up 21 degrees. That's going to be for 1b. I'm going to need to go 180 degrees and up to 41 degrees, the same point uh, as. Uh, a, excuse me, and then my final point is going to be 21 degrees up and 244 degrees over. So again, we've got common overlap there, and we're going to see this a couple of times. So now let's go to our last set of points, and that was going to be the 1C, 2C, and 3C. We're going to do those in green, and that's going to be 12 degrees up at 104. Right, so it's probably going to be the mirror image of this point right over here, point 3A. And we're going to also look at 116 degrees, 21 degrees up. Oh, that's a, an equivalent point also. Lost my color. And finally, our third point is going to be 180 degrees and 41 degrees up which again, as we saw, is a common point for all of these. And so when I connect these together, I'm going to go to my farthest point on each edge and drop a vertical line down. Oops, vertical, should be vertical. And then I'm gonna draw this loaf of bread arc between all of them. Might not be pretty. In fact, I might do that one again. Let me just connect these points. Oops. Like this. Back down. Back down. And then finally connect it together. And so everything under this curve, right, is going to be in shadow. And so what we're seeing is that the months for this particular array, the way that, that it was designed, you're going to see that, if I just look at the analysis of this, you're going to see that even in sometime uh, up till March in the winter months, definitely in the month of December, throughout the entire month of December, you're going to have the uh, photovoltaic array shaded, which is not a good sign. And again, into the afternoon of March, we're going to have shading. So we're going to see uh, some distinct shading possibilities for this array, suggesting that uh, when we actually want to develop this array, we'd want to space the array further apart. And to what degree would we want to space it further apart? 
we'd effectively want to look into how do we get this array spacing to be far enough apart so that that loaf of bread kind of top fits underneath this area where it's not blocking any of the months in the hours of the day. And uh, we can do that with effective design. So right now, as it's designed, the array is going to shade each other in, I mean, the front array is going to shade the rear array. And that's going to create a problem. And we can count the number of hours that shading is occurring in that period. And we could enter that data into our system advisor model, into SAM, and then run the simulation to find out what the losses would be relative to no shading in that system. And we're going to do that in the next, uh, in the next page.